Hey, this is Evans at Motorcycle.com, and I am at the Moto Guzzi factory in Mandello del Lario, Italy. And I have just spent a most awesome day riding the Moto Guzzi V100 Mandello. I've been waiting for this bike ever since it was announced last year, and I finally got to throw a leg over it. In fact, I told all the guys that I work with that they couldn't even think about coming. I really wanted to do this ride. So what's the big deal about this motorcycle? First and foremost, it's got a brand new engine. The engine is much more compact. It displaces 1,042 cc's. And look closely, yeah, those are fins, but that's not for air cooling. This bike is liquid cooled, which is a first for Moto Guzzi, and it's a really big deal because this will be the engine that carries them into the future. This is the only bike it's available on, but I can guarantee you that it's going to be in a bunch of other stuff before too long. So what makes this engine so special? Well, it's smaller and more compact. I've told you about the liquid cooling, but look at this. No fuel injectors right here. The head has been rotated 90 degrees, which places the exhaust coming out the side here instead of the leading edge of the engine. And so that's a radical departure. It gave me a lot more room on the bike. Because the engine is so much shorter, it enabled Moto Guzzi to make the swing arm longer while not really affecting the wheelbase that much. So with the longer swing arm and with the position it's in, it limits the jacking under acceleration and you feel more linear acceleration, no, no pogoing or anything like that. It feels much more like a chain. So what's this engine like out on the road? There's a little bit of driveline lash because of the shaft, but the engine, the, the EFI is silky smooth on throttle, off throttle, the transitions are all really, really nice. It spins up quicker than the old engine did. Okay, one of the biggest features of the new engine, aside from the liquid cooling, is the fact that the crankshaft and the primary rotate in opposite directions, and that eliminates some of the torque steering that the previous versions of Moto Guzzi's engines suffered from. So if you're going through a corner, and you hit the throttle, the torque steer would either make it, it want to tighten up on the corner or stand up on the corner. And there's nothing of like that. Um, low speed, high speed, any type of corner, when you're on the throttle, it accelerates and it, it holds the line that you have. Speaking of accelerating, the uh, V100 is the first Moto Guzzi to have a six axis IMU. And so that enables things like lean sensitive ABS, lean sensitive traction control, quick shifter, all of these nice electronics. And what I want to talk about right now a little bit is the quick shifter itself. If I had a single gripe about this bike, I think it's that it feels like a first generation quick shifter. The reason I have this gripe about the quick shifter is because we spent a lot of time in these slow, tight first and second gear corners um, when we were going around the switchbacks going up into the mountains. And I noticed that coming out of the corners occasionally, when I would be upshifting uh, from first to second, I would hit a false neutral. And I think, I'm pretty sure that it was the timing of the cutout for the quick shifter that wasn't allowing me to complete the upshift. So I just started shifting uh, with the clutch for first and second. Second to third, third to fourth, fourth to fifth, all of that were silky smooth on the upshifts and on the downshifts provided you were not at neutral throttle. The, the, the engine likes for you to be either accelerating hard or decelerating hard to engage the quick shifter. If you're at a neutral throttle, it's just not as smooth as say the Multistrada V4, the Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GT Plus. Those you can shift at any in a throttle opening at any speed seamlessly. And so, this is Moto Guzzi's first effort with a quick shifter. I'm sure it will be refined over time. It may even be a software update to smooth things out. So that was really the only fly in the ointment with the motorcycle not riding. This is the S model, so it was equipped with the semi-active suspension. And the suspension is linked to the ride modes. And so when tooling around town where things tended to be a little bumpier, potholes and stuff like that, I put it in Turismo mode, which gave a softer throttle reaction and softened up the suspension. And it was perfect for going through all the little towns and villages we go through when we're riding. Then when we get out of town, put it in Strata or the road mode, 
the throttle becomes much snappier, the suspension tightens up a little, and it just, it's ready to rock. And for a bike that weighs, I believe it's a claimed 517 pounds thereabouts, um, it handles its weight really well. It's very neutral front to rear, and a lot of, a lot of excessive diving, either under braking or acceleration. The suspension seems to adjust very nicely to the pace you're going and the situation that you're riding over. The riding position on this bike is perfect for racking up lots of miles. While in the photos it looks like the, the seat to peg ratio is a little tight, I'm 5'11 and I have a 32 inch inseam and my legs were not cramped at all all day. In fact, I found the swoop of this seat, especially the padding up here in the front, allowed me to scooch forward in some situations and slide back in others. And it really made this functional platform for negotiating either tight turns or more sweeping turns. When you think about racking up a lot of miles, the amount of wind pressure on your body and the amount of wind protection that a motorcycle provides can make a big difference. And one of the coolest things about the V100 is this adaptive aerodynamics. Now I know it sounds like it's borderline gimmickry, but this morning when it was really cold and I'm wearing riding jeans, I could feel a noticeable difference um, at speed when these popped out. And Moto Guzzi claims that it's a 22% less wind pressure on your torso, which doesn't sound huge. And it's not like I could feel the, a big difference around my love handles here with the wind. But you ride a lot of miles all day and 22% less pressure on your body is probably gonna make you a little bit fresher at the end of the day. The neat thing about these is they are customizable in that you can have them open at whatever speed you want them to. Turismo has them open at 60 kilometers per hour. Rain mode has them stay open all the time. Both sport and road keep them tucked in because they figure people want to be sporty and have them nice and aerodynamic. The V100 comes in two different models. There's the standard model, which I didn't get a chance to test, and the S model. And what differentiates the S model are a couple small things and one really big thing. The small things are you get the electronic uh, quick shifter, up and down quick shifter, and heated grips as standard. The big thing is the Olin's semi-active suspension. And that really, I think, will be something that you're gonna wanna get with this bike. You have the ability to tune the suspension to your liking, so if you like it, the super soft Barca lounger ride around town, you set Turismo to be super soft and plush, you know. And if you are want it to be extra hard nosed, you can fine tune it in sport mode. Then, once you've set those the way you like them, each time you switch the modes, the suspension is set to your taste. I really like it, and I think it's gonna be a fun thing to, to do. One thing that's not on this bike, which I was really sort of regret not being able to test, are the hard bags. They insert here um, in these slots and have one of the most interesting mounting systems I've ever seen. And that is the seat pops off and you insert the bags and then you put the seat down and the seat has pins that press down into the bags themselves, locking it in position. No more fiddling around to make sure that you, you've got them correct. If you can close this seat, the bags are locked in place. And so I'm hoping to get this bike for a longer term once I get back home to the States and really put some miles on it and see what these bags are like. So what can I say in summary? This bike is loads of fun. Did it live up to all of my expectations um, after a year of waiting? Yeah, pretty much. Is it a perfect motorcycle? No, this is a first generation of this motorcycle and it has some teething pains and that comes through in the low gear quick shifting issues that I had. But other than that, I can't say how much fun this bike is to ride when you get it up into the mountains. You lean it over in the corners, it holds its line. It likes to be tossed on its side and railed through the corners. And I've never ridden a Guzzi that like that felt like that. And it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. So if you want to read my full review, where I've had a chance to really sit down and think about what the heck I'm trying to say instead of babbling here after just getting off of the bike, go to motorcycle.com and read my article. If you like this video, thank you very much. Click like, um, subscribe to our channel, and please check back often.